All right, so in order to get started with this, um, my suggestion is that you have the file open for which you want to create a title block. Have that drawing open like I've got shown here. You can see here down at the bottom I've got multiple, uh, multiple drawings. So these are uh, the IPP files, and what we're going to be creating now is the title block drawing. So if you come up over um, under the... Um, inventor of the I file and then go to the new what we're going to want to do is cl click on the ANSI IDW file just a reminder this is your IPT file so this builds the actual 3d part when we start building assemblies we'll use these um, folders this um, set of drawings here and then down here at the bottom is creating um, we want to create an IDW file which is going to be the border and the title block for um, a drawing as an orthographic drawing. So we're going to be using the ANSI IDW file and then hit create. And then that brings up our border. The border that we're going to be using is going to be a C size. Um, so you can uh, leave the C size as the default sheet of paper. Um, I know in AutoCAD we've used A size a lot, but for this one the default is C. And this prints with the same um, ratio as an A size piece of paper, so it gives us a little bit more room to put our objects. And in real life, your drawings would probably be on something like a C size sheet of paper. A size really is hard to put all of our dimensions and have an isometric drawing on there. So this is the this is the format. Looking over here, we still have our browser, and we have the sheets. All of the information for the sheets are going to be tucked under here, so there's the border, and that's our title block right here. So that's the ANSI large title block. The first thing you want to do is go all the way over to the left and click on the word base. Because the 5.7 was the last drawing I had open, it's going to go to that file as the default. So it sees, um, it builds like a path back to where that default so you can see right here, it's building a path to that file, and it's linking the sheet of paper, or the, the title block, the IDW file, with the original IPT file. If I wanted to change the file, I could then go in and, and select on a specific sheet if I needed to change something. All right, but I'm going to leave it on the 5, the 5.7. Five, so the very first thing I'm going to do is drop my base view, which is going to be my front view. And I'm going to project over to my right side view and to my top view. And then I'm going to now add something, which is the isometric drawing, into my upper right-hand corner. So I'm going to click that right there. The next step is to hit the right mouse button. This is very important. You click right mouse button, and then you hit the word create. And it's going to generate your isometric, um, your orthographic drawings for all of this. I do like to shade this view right here. So over in when you when you finish, go over and click on the red box. It's around the isometric. Right click, and then go into Edit View, and we can change the setting. So this box right here indicates whether the part's going to be shaded or not shaded. So I'm going to hit OK and click on that. Now, if you click on those boxes before starting. Let me just back up a little bit. So back, I'm going to do this a little bit quicker. If I didn't select, if I selected shaded now, this is what I would end up with. I would end up with the ortho, oops, wrong view. Do, do, do. I'll fix that. So I can right click on this view and delete it. And then go back to project, pick that view, and then go up. And right click to create. So I have those shaded. All right. If I wanted to change that, I could right-click on that, Edit View, and then take the shade it off. Okay, so that allows me to go back and make changes to those views as we get started. So this is the very basic. Okay, so this one does not have any centers, I mean any holes, so therefore I don't need to draw any center lines. Um, a, a question that has been uh, brought up before is what about your spacing between the views? Well, we're going to pretty much just eyeball these at this point. So if you look at this, what I'm doing right now is I'm just pointing and I'm holding down on the left mouse button as I drag. But I can relocate this. I can click on the, when it comes up with the red box, I can drag it out. 
because when we put dimensions on it, we're going to eat up a lot more of this space. So you can click on this and modify um, the location. Just kind of look at it and keep it balanced. I mean, you don't want to have the right side view slammed right up against that and then the top view way up there at the, at the top. So just kind of move that over, allow enough space. When we get into dimensioning, um, which is the next step, we can move things around. So that's the basics for that one. Um, so now let's do one with a circle. So back to the same thing. Go to New, click on ANSI IDW file, Create, go to Base, and um, this one I want to just spend a little time looking at the orientation. You may not have chosen the right uh, projection plane when you started your drawing, so you may um, need to go through the list over here and see what view actually is the, the one that you want to use for the front side. Uh, mine, I just did pick the right view. But if you did not do that, go through this little list over here and try to find the correct view that would give you the front view as indicated in the book. You can also change your scale. So if I wanted to make this a little bit bigger, I could also change the scale. All right. I'm going to leave it at 1 to 1 at this point, and then I'm going to change it after I get my three views because I do want um, my isometric drawn to be at 1 to 1 scale. So I'm going to put this on here. I'm going to bring it over to the right, bring it up to the top, bring in my isometric, right-click my mouse button, hit Create, and um, so that's all shaded. I want to turn this back to um, not shaded on the, the front view, so I'm going to turn that off, and that's going to give me that view right there. So once again, I can pick on this and move it out if I want. I can also change the scale factor. So if I have enough room on this drawing and I want it to be a little bit bigger, I can change the scale. So I'm going to change that 2 to 1, and then I'm just going to move this around. So we like to keep all of our drawings up above this area right here. I don't like to bring anything down into this area unless I had to. This is where we put notes on our drawings. So the next thing I'm going to do is center lines. So I'm going to click on my annotate ribbon. Okay, so coming all the way over to the right, I'm going to look at these little symbols right here. I'm going to click on the center mark, and I'm going to pick the outer of the larger circles. So I'm going to pick this circle, and because this has been broken by this cutout, I'm going to have to go around all the way around. Okay, so that gives me the center line. The next center line we need is the one that goes in between, um, like, these two hit the, the hidden lines or like this one right here let's do this one first so because the hidden line extends all the way over here I'm going to pick this hidden line and this one because it's going to make a difference in the length of my center line so when I click on the two longer lines the center line is drawn at the correct length let me show you what happens if you don't pick that so if you pick like this line right here and this line um let's see that one yeah so it makes the center line a little bit smaller in conjunction with that length of that line. You can work with that. Um, you have to click on the line and then pick and drag it. But I always pick the longest line that I that's available, and it makes a better center line because you can see um, it's just. Oh, and this is the other bad thing. It did the center mark between here and here, which now that center line is off, and that was a very bad very bad thing. So let's pick two lines that are part of the same diameter and that is evenly spaced and the center line is placed in between those two. So up on the top, same thing. Pick the, the two center lines. They're equal, but however this line is now short. So I'm going to pick a point to the end of that. When I see the green dot pop up, I'm going to now manually pick on the end point and drag it out a little bit past. Now, we don't have the luxury of, like, typing in the eighth of an inch, but hopefully now that you've done all of the work you did in AutoCAD, you can eyeball that, okay? You know that the line needs to come out past the um, object line. You know, that's apparently too, too short, but, you know, get that line out there just a little bit. Use a line that's already there as a reference, and that will be your center line location. So... That's all we're going to do for these right now. 
Um, I will let you determine whether you think you need a one-to-one -one or two-to-one scale as you go through the list of drawings. We will come back and we will finish up the title block. Um, you can see that when you do, do the title block, it's automatically going to put your name in there. It's going to put the date. And once I save this, all right, let me do a save as. Remember that you can save this in the same folder. Because it is a IDW file, you will now have an IPT file and an IDW file saved in the same location. So I'm going to hit save. Okay, and then it updates the drawing number automatically in the in the title block. So it's it's pretty intuitive. It it does a good job on putting the information in there as we need it. Um, we will add the company name, which is going to be Easty Glass up here, and then the title for these parts. We'll we'll do that. We're going to come back and do that when we dimension it. So the name, date, and the drawing number is automatically put in there for you. Um, when you go to look at your list of drawing files, let me just kind of minimize this real quick. Um, when you look in Inventor, okay, so you'll see the IDW file, which is going to be, the, you know, indicated by the little icon with the orthographic um, location on the border, and then your IPT file. So you can have two files named the same, they just have two different extensions. And we can even put like a DWG file in there. As long as they don't have the same extension, you can have multiple, um, multiple drawings saved in there. And that's about it. Any questions?